Okay, bear with me. Um, let me just show you guys. So the, the top of this, um, I'll come back to that. I'm going to do a couple of things here. Top of this guy, the top of the, hopefully I can lay this down here. The top of the canopy is curve shape. It's curve shape. I'm thinking the node, um, they call it a blister, it was on top of here when it compressed down. It reversed the tension to actually help it force its way down even further, uh, force its way in a violent reaction even more so. Once this crown was leveled off, um, it only took just a little bit below that crown and at a, at a certain section, not the whole entire bridge leveling off, but this would be the where the uh, node or um, the blister was. It would push through that one section creating like a vacuum, if you will, a void and a con concave and once that thing popped, it's sort of like this guy here. I'm just, I don't know how this is going to react. I just got it to go in tension, um, crowned in tension. So let's call that the top of the bridge and let's call this the uh, node, the node up top here. Oh, I guess I can use this, it's kind of cool. It's a uh, PSI thing, it doesn't really work this way, but it's not designed to work this way. Now the node's here and it's just pushing down. Well, I guess I can use that part too. As you can see it pushed down over here, but if it can't, if this is pinned, okay, so if this is pinned where it can't push down, because it can't push down, it can, but let's see if I put a pen on there for it. Okay, so there's a pen there. Um, let's see what happens. Well, that's unfair to the, should only be at the uh, ends that, hmm. Nevertheless, let's push down as, as, as the load goes onto it. You see it pushing out the sides? It's going to push down out the sides. That's going to push, put, put all these tension cables going across this design. There's tons of tension cables going across. Um, let me pause this for a second. Okay, so this bridge has, this is the canopy plan. It has an eight foot, this is eight foot wide. And the, uh, um, well, deck's 30 something, so this is half of the canopy. Um, and then there's where the node goes down the middle, um, which would be um, different nodes. Or, I'm sorry, they call them um, blisters. Um, so that's where the post-tensioning cables went through. Their, number 11 should not have had um, post-tensioning um, on it at all as per their plans that, uh, or, or, or what we're looking at now. But here are the... Uh, the uh, Longitudinal or horizontal, however, I guess we've reserved the plans and however the plans refer to them as. And what do they call them? Um, no reference to them. There's one direction yet. Um, dimensional, uh, dimensions are size, maybe the trust, otherwise, otherwise noted. Okay. Um, so here are the three one, two, three, and canopy half section. Yeah, half section. So it is a void in the middle, and then they pick up on the other side. And that is the uh, canopy's um, deck on this ver this version. Um, I'm sorry, the canopy's deck is over here, um, half a ver half a uh, deck half. So this is what it looks like. And there's the cables, and this is the amount of um, pretensioning that they get. Um, the amount of tensioning they get, and each one is different. So there's T5. T1, T2, T3, T1, and T5, uh, T1, T5, so there would be T5, um, and T1, T5, they're 19 by point, so it appears to be 19 strands by um, 0.6 inch uh, diameter cables, you know, more specifications than that on these cables, they're not just your Home Depot cables, but let me go on. So now we have, this is the uh, canopy, um, and they call them transverse uh, tendon spaces. So two foot six inch, um, 29 spaces, one, two, well, we're gonna call that a half. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Twenty-nine spaces. Okay, I used the where where they went from to 
29 spaces, um, total of 72 feet, 6 inches. This is where the failure happened. This is where the uh, blister um, is located. So what I'm driving at is that, that once you put the tension on this, and we're looking at the top view down, top like we're in the sky looking down the deck, and you're looking at the tendons, the, uh, the tendons um, right here, specifically roughly, roughly about here. Uh, actually, it's 13 feet in, I believe. 13... Okay, so I paused the video and did a doing a correction. It's um, uh, the tendon down here is 32 feet. The one that was um, this tendon here, number 11, um, is tendon. Not a ten um, this uh, diagonal number 11 is 19 feet nine and a quarter inches um, from the beginning inside bottom of the deck uh, canopy, underside of the canopy, um, inverted the canopy, underside of the canopy. Um, I don't know where this is inside the canopy or at the underside of it. It's, it's located at its intersection at one point. is 19 feet, 9 and a quarter inches. Um, this is the diagonal. This is number 10. This is number 11. And I'll confirm that with you guys. This is what they call a blister, um, bar anchor blister. And I do have it in the video. You can see it right here in the video screen. Bar anchor blister, typical. I mean, they get to flex a little bit with it. With the uh, with it, when they say typical, that's a way of uh, giving some, hmm, maybe giving too much flex. Um, but now, if we notice the sizes of these, this uh, connection—not the blister, but the connection where these two, number 10, 11 meet, are three feet five and a half inches. As you progressively go to the left, um, if this is considered the North Tower, where everyone's saying it collapses, let's consider that a known or our north tower, north section, and that would be the south section. And um, with that said, as we go down towards the south or left to uh, right to left, we can see each blister is significantly uh, denoted as having a couple of inches or so larger as it works its way down. So obviously engineering decided those two inches really matter. And let's move on from there. Um, still with the blisters, uh, this is 21 feet 3 inches. Um, 21 feet 3 inches center line. So center line of the blister. It's not necessarily center line of this. This is the center line of these blisters. Um, significance of that is, eh, don't know yet. I don't know what we can consider the significance of the center line of the blister based on um, how they designed each one. Um, if they were consistent, then that center line could be information could be useful because then you could use center lines and to figure out whether they um, when they were putting in the the uh, tendons, did they uh, do them perfect on each one? You know, because the engineering recall would would tell us would tell the installer how to put each uh, tendon exactly in relationship to the next tendon. All right. So now we're at the crown. Um, let's see if I can do this. I'm doing this on a mini tripod on my computer, as you might have gathered. Um, well, I'm going to read some measurements off. This is 16 feet from outside to outside. And this is a little bit of a radius. Um, in fact, this is there are three radiuses they choose, an inside, a bottom radius, and then a center line radius, and then a top radius. Um, Significant is the uh, the tension is all in the lower um, radius below the uh, mid and the lower one. The tension is down there um, with three, one, two, three, and they call these the uh, longitudinal, 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 longitudinal tendons. And it says typical again. So what we have here. Um, is the amount of cover concrete here is very important between this and there that's specified um, as cover somewhere else in the plans and this of course is cover also amount of concrete over the surf uh, around these tendons um, um, around these uh, longitudinal tendons there are only six when I say only there are six I shouldn't say only there's engineered to be six I don't know what kind of redundancy is in is in this um, maybe they only need two. Maybe the redundancy is a factor of two more. I don't know. Maybe the redundancy is it needed, uh, like, say, 100,000 
PSI cable and they used 400,000 PSI cable. I don't know the redundancy factors. Uh, uh, you know, that would be redundancy. Um, of course, the it all comes down to the plate then. You know, if the plate fails, then you've got the failure of the cable or, or, the, or the stay. But it appears that looking at all the images online that none of these plates failed. Save this one video, uh, one image. Very interesting. It looks like I only see two of these and it looks like here and here might be missing. I'll take a look at that. With that said, let's move on. Just, so we have the blister on top of this guy. The blister is in here. And when they're pulling down on it, imagine it pushing down. It's trying to straighten out this arch. At some point when it straightens out this arch, it's then going to just, I believe, the forces can reverse and create a negative, uh, an opposite effect of the uh, same post-tensioning instead of being crowned, um, because this bridge does have a slight crown on it, it then will invert and possibly throw the tension the other way or just loosen, just immediately release all this tension, its ability to help hold the lower deck. The lower deck did fail within pretty close proximity of, of this failure, um, and I'm thinking that's because number 10, um, number 10 goes diagonal, put forces onto the lower deck at that point when they were pulling on the node on the uh, blister. So as they're pulling on this, I think the forces are created here. And the, the, the uh, next failure of the lower deck is somewhere around here, I believe. So this section here, I think it's, I'm just recalling, somewhere about here, or well, might even right be there, which would make total sense if the forces were coming down here. This would be the greatest point of contact for forces. The deck was able to take its own load and just the canopy failed. Um, then it would just be somewhere probably a mid-span failure or based on how much this is falling over and it might not have been so catastrophic um, but the forces here I believe created the forces in the lower deck also that called the lower deck to fail after this, after, uh, this I think this upper deck failed first and then the lower deck failed secondarily as the forces continued to drive them themselves into one quick blow into the lower deck around this area um, <clears throat> a continuous blow. Well, let me put it this way. It released all the forces it had here, create, now concentrating all the forces on number 10, causing this to then crack. The forces were still there. One, um, one leg broke. This one, I believe, possibly started uh, buckling. And after that point, it was just game over. It was like you know, putting pressure on a glass, um, a glass bowl, if you will. It's going to hold until it finally shatters. Um, it won't flex. It's, well, in theory is probably flexing somewhat in a molecular way, but let's move on here. So we're back to this blister pushing down. Um, this looks like a solid thing to you visually, mentally, but, but remember it's not. It's, it's this. It's pushing down, and you're looking at the end of it. But it's pushing over here in this curve, just a curve with a with a uh, one one foot nine inch boxed um, box column, one foot nine inches. I say that was their typical, if you will. Um, this is the footing. Um, these are the footers, footings for the. I'm going to move on. Um, those are pylons. Pylon, python. Okay, let me move on here. Okay, here's your, here's your total width, um, 16 foot, 31 foot. This should be an idea. That's a blister in place. I believe this is what you're looking at, this visual, the blister, a very little knob up top. That's the drainage for the uh, water. This, this deck sloped. Water would go to the uh, center here and roll out the end pipes. Um, uh, the gutter, if you will, downspout, act as a gutter, and that's the downspout. Um, Scrolling on here, we go to, we're going to get to my metal in a minute. So here's the bottom deck. These are the um, long, longitudinal tendons, all of these guys. Um, all that pressure from when I said the failure happened. It then created a, a, a um, the same, same as the blister pulling down. I think that as the blister pulling down the top canopy, this one point then did the same thing again. It's uh, reversed. Um, number, so that's numbered. Okay, let me show if I can show you the number. Show you the numbers. 
so we can keep track of that. This is what the top canopy looks like, one, two, three, and three at six. And then you have the what they refer to as a transverse tendons, these guys going this way. So this gives it tension that way. But in an, in an arch, I don't, I don't see them in a straight line. Um, and they're, I don't see the transverse tendons here um, going straight across. So I don't know if it's going across these tendons here. And these are tendon, tensioned first, and these guys are tensioned. And now it creates a, uh, a sheet of metal, if you will. Um, every two foot six inches based on whatever specifications are right so there is the uh, transverse tendon in the lower lower deck you're looking at it and it looks pretty straight across um, this lower deck when we say lower deck we're referring to this this guy coming across here this is this guy that's the uh, the, de the gutter um, these are your center lines, um, 20 foot minimum radius. Um, I don't know where they're pulling this radius from. Interesting. Uh, we'll move on there. Uh, diameter strand, four. Four, wow. Not much. So, this is, wait a minute, is this the, uh, this is, tw this is 31, but there's the lower deck. Yeah, this is the lower deck, 31 feet, 8 inches. So it's pretty straight across. Um, PGL. 46, 000, uh, 46 kips per strand. All right, moving on. This is the half shot we looked at earlier. The half of the uh, canopy top and this half of the deck. Uh, we don't have to take too much data out of that now. You can see your tensioning. As we move on, here's your canopy plan view. Um, mm -hmm. Nothing, uh, nothing of uh, to help you guys figure out what I'm going to show you next. Perhaps over here I could show you number 11 and number 10. This is the the proposal after it was done. The uh, upright was going to go in. Uh, pylon, the vertical, the tower, whatever you want to refer to it. And this would be just the, this, the, the data on it. How, um, for example, that's called the 1D, I believe. 1D was 39 feet, 8 and 3 eighths inches. It tells you the angle of, at the top was going to be where it intersect 37.33 degrees right here. And the uh, next intersection point would be at the lower, at the top of the, uh, top of the uh, canopy would have been uh, 51.22 degrees. So this is a pipe, 16 inch round pipe um, section. It was gonna be steel. Um, this is how they connect the, at the top of the canopy and at the uh, tower or pylon. All right. Uh, it was structural in there to help with the uh, resonance of bridges what the plans call for. Now, wrapping this up, we're getting close to wrapping it up. This is the uh, blister. Anchor blister, they call it. Um, there's a numbering now. That's number 10. That's number, uh, I'm sorry, that's number 10. I'm looking at the green. That's number 11. And there's two and three. Number 10 has no, no I'm sorry. Number 10 has, this has 280 kips on it. You guys can do your conversions for kips. We're talking thousands. And, uh, so 11 has zero has no ki no PSI on it, no kips, um, pounds, um, no kips. Number 12 has no kips. It's like an upright. It's got some forces on it. It's on dead weight, right? So um, this is what is being theorized. Number 11 is getting tension on it at this time um, from post-tensioning, as you see in the images. And this um, created, uh, after so much so much force was created by the hydraulic uh, tensioning tool. It, that crown, I believe, the crown that we saw, started evening out. Um, or it created, or, or, or it did this. It created so much pressure, like the broken glass. It had so much force on this cable that, like the broken, like a glass theory, is that you can put all the pressure on it, that, that upside down bowl, of gla that glass bowl. And then all of a sudden when it reaches its max, it's just going to shatter. You won't see it coming. Um, so I think it's the same thing with this guy. They started loading it. 
and that crown was solid until it, meet, it just hit its drastic or immediate breaking point, which immediately called the surge down. This buckled, um, or perhaps it's buckled, meaning it, it had more load on it than it could take because it wasn't designed with, to take load. Um, and it started torquing, and when it started buckling, that created this, this ability for this now to break free to force even more forces down spontaneously. Um, and I don't know what that tool is capable of or what PSI it had on it or what it had on at the time that, um, that all this happened. That would be a major factor telling you what the failure, what, um, at what PSI this failed at. Um, what would be amazing, though, is if that tool, for example, can only put out um, 10, th say, 10 kips, just go something crazily, you know, crazy low. It can only do 10 kips. So the factor in that is that no matter what they did, it could never cause... Um, this to fail because maybe with non-load bearing maybe it could still take 20 kips so that would be an issue but I'm not, I don't want to make up an imaginary way but I'm just telling you so um, but that tool can create this drama um, so this force this force coming down um, causes the buckle which then all of a sudden causes a spontaneous reaction allowing this to now drop down the load that was on, at the same time you're applying some force here, force is increasing here in number 10. Um, number 10 was designed to take 280 oil. It's designed to take 280 kips down here. If we look at 10, sorry, I'm looking at the pen and the, and the computer, I mean the cell phone at the same time. So as these forces broke, um, as this broke free, this buckled, uh, turned, um, allowing the forces to immediately release. This all transferred to number, this causes failure of the upper canopy. Um, the lower, um, this, this immediately transferred all of that force. Um, it would be like you trying to push a door open, and all of a sudden somebody turns the doorknob, and you've got all your force ready to open that doorknob, go in there. You go flying across the room. It went flying across the room into the uh, lower canopy, um, lower canopy, and created the same issue, except for if you recall, this trans, um, trans the, uh, the, um, as you recall, the transverse tendon profile is flat. So it's already at a neutral point, if you will. Um, and so as soon as that force is hit, it took nothing to make it continue over. Uh, and now you may, because of this design, when it breaks, because of this design, of the uh, transverse tendons, um, it can just easily create a, a break going across. All it'd have to do is make the uh, these other tendons fail. Then they call those tendons the uh, these deck tendons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, those tendons, and it's a, this is half a deck, so it appears that all it would have to do is pretty much, you know, make one fail. If you look at the lower deck, we should see a different failure than upper deck because this has more uh, transverse tendons. Um, the failure, the lower deck is in tension. I remember seeing some of it, but you'll see more so of a, a location or a, a minimum location of a spot failure, if you will, that caused that one to break and then the rest just did the same thing. The rest of the transverse tendons um, flexed. Remember, that's a lot of force, like open the door and you run in. With that said, let's let's see if I can duplicate this with a silly metal, metal um, piece of metal I found. And let's go. So if this is the top, let's see if this pops down. So here's the forces coming down. The uh, the forces are coming down. Now it it wants to go back, right? But here it's flexing. This will be like a slow failure, and all of a sudden, it should just pop. But see how it went down? When I continued on it, it just didn't stop. But it, so it continued down. And now that force is reversed. Sorry, I'm trying to show you guys. It doesn't want to spring back because now the, the crown is opposite. And now that just would help it just continue flying down. I went back to neutral because this was, uh, you know, it's not confined like, the, uh, like my, my, my better subject would have been. So there's your force there, your crown, if you will. And these ends are restrained here and here. So as soon as I start putting the load at the top with the tendon, 
onto the uh, uh, blister. It forces down, but it's still holding there. And all of a sudden, that one number 11 can't hold anymore. And it's just a drastic thing. Open the door. Once you open that door, the doorknob, someone's pushing on it or trying to come in. Whew, it just flew it, blew it, blew it down. That caused the whole deck to, to fail. That's my, uh, that's my idea of the uh, failure.